Ear Ground Radio. New voices amplified. Greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to Agro New Voices Amplified. My name is Plot Marco, and today is a big day, one of the biggest, biggest moments in my life because I'm speaking to a man who inspired me a lot. Just looking through his journey for years, I've been silently uh, grasping and getting so much inspiration. I'm talking about the legendary, the living legend in terms of media, in terms of communication, in terms of broadcasting, and in so many ways, entertainment-wise. I'm talking about Teach Matters. Elder, welcome to Air Grant. How are you doing? Uh, it's been a minute. Sure, I have not seen you in many years, Plot. I hope you're doing well. It's, it's, in it's been a lot of whichever years. Whichever part of the world you're in. Uh, I'm, I'm doing good. I've been stuck here because of Corona, but I should have traveled to Zimbabwe. But you know, the funny thing is, Corona has brought with it many new experiences and many new opportunities as well, especially for people like yourself and me who are in this industry. Journalism has really been uh, catapulted into the forefront of digitalization. So I'm glad that, you know, we are able to do such kind of interviews and, and to focus on really growing the industry for the benefit of not just us as practitioners, but also for the benefit of viewers and listeners. Wow, that is great. It's actually encouraging to hear that, uh, especially from someone who started broadcasting when everything was still uh, analog. Let's, let, let me take you back to the pre-broadcast. Stay, but do you remember vinyl? Do you remember my yes, uh, cassettes? Ainsy <laughs> rebels, you to you. you know? <laughs> and when you were meant to edit, you actually scissors. Huh? <laughs> could could check a rebel. <laughs> that is what they called editing then. <laughs> well, let, let, let me take you back to the early years. Uh, you've been in the broadcasting industry, entertainment for so many years. Uh, but you grew up in Highfield. Uh, just a snippet, just a glimpse yes. into your childhood growing up in Highfield. How was it like? Highfields was a very important part of my life. It is what made me the man that I am today. I could feel there were specific things that one needed in order for them to survive. Yes. And one, you had to think on your feet. Yeah, you had to be very agile. You needed to understand how to coexist with others and the same you know, social environment. And I think that really became the foundation of who I am today. I, I do not fear new experiences, nor do I fear new territories. If I want something, I go and I get it. Wow. Great. A go-getter, that is. But your entry into media and entertainment, uh, do you remember yeah. what, gave it, what gave you uh, that sort of break? What, what initiated you into that process? Two very, well, I'm going to mention three very important things. Uh, when I was growing up, the only means of, of, of national broadcasting or means of connectivity was radio, yeah? Mm -hmm. I remember television was very sporadic. black and white TV set. Do you know what I mean? And I'm a bad yeah, you know, perhaps when I was a young person, I think in Eiffel's there were like four or five television sets. So so one of the things that we normally used to do is people would, would after dinner, sit around and listen to radio. And, and in so doing, we're inspired by the voices. Then I grew up in the era of Anna John Matinde, yes. Anna Musi Kumalo, you know, grand, grand names in the industry. Uh, the man who inspired me because we came from the same environment, same neighborhood, Josh Makawa. There were people Makawa. like, yeah, the late, great Josh Makawa. What a legend. There were, you know, there, there are numerous names that I, you know, I wouldn't want to, to miss 
other names yes. in, in, you know, in this salutation. But I think then what happened is, is the understanding of how important a radio set was in a home attracted yes. me to broadcast. That is one. Two, uh, I also realized that in order for me to go from place to place, to be able to visit other places, I needed to have reason to. And I remember that most people who really used to go from corner to corner in Zimbabwe were either DJs or musicians. So I'm not one talented job raiser. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not one talented, you know, with my throat as job praiser or Winky D. Yeah. But I think what, what I was able to do at a very young age is to understand how people reacted to good vibes, to, you know, to good jams. And that attracted me to being a DJ. So I started off as a young man, you know, going into nightclubs, assisting others. I also had an uncle, a very, very important and inspirational uncle of mine who, who played a pivotal role in turning me from a boy into a man. And he had inroads into ZBC. So at the time I wanted to, I was, I was pursuing a, a degree in, 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 in chemical, in, in I wanted to have attraction into that as well. However, what then happened is I think I think the fact that I got into into entertainment as a young person and was able to start to travel as a very young person because of DJing and because of broadcasting, I then joined ZBC as a trainee doing sound behind the scenes before I actually got onto the microphone or in front of the camera. I was an apprentice um, sound man, an apprentice cameraman. Yeah. I did. I worked for quite some time as a deputy producer, and then um, everything then turned when I had my first experience behind the microphone. Wow! And tell me about that first experience. How was it like getting yourself on radio and going back home? People have heard you on radio. <laughs> I used to say to people to at my at my house at home that one day I'm gonna be a DJ. I wanna be I'm gonna be on radio and you guys will be listening to me, you know, as much as they listen to other popular names. And so I joined ZBC, the television department, yes. before I got the opportunity to go over to radio. Uh, okay. And so what I, I yeah, so what I would do is during break times or after work, I would, because I, I loved radio so much, I'd cross over from the TV side and go to radio and hang out with, you know, the bigger brothers there, Anakud Zimaruza and people yes. like that. And they knew that this young man had interest in radio. So most of the time that allow for me, because uh, when we're getting started, yes. there were certain things that were required of the studio. So if a person was on radio, they needed to have a producer, you know, to either go and pick up a script or go upstairs and get a record. You know, things were not digital yet. Mm -hmm. So I was one of those young uh, boys who, who'd run up and down the stairs to assist, you know, mm -hmm. and on a personality. And with that, I, I, at times I would be on standby if, yes. if the studio was crossing over from one part of the country to another. So this particular important day that changed my life, the mm -hmm. DJ who was meant to come and, and, and take up the shift was unable to come on time. So they said to me, okay, play some music. Don't say anything. Just play music until, <laughs> until the <laughs> DJ. But me being me, I decided, ah, I'm <laughs> gonna put up the microphone. <laughs> Introduce myself, and the rest is history. Yeah. Wow, wow. quite interesting. Fast forward um, from Zimbabwe, and then you went to SA. You became the big man there. You mentored so many. And I remember in 2016, uh, attending one event that was organized by Elder Chamuchuanza and his team. Oh, yes. She yes. got yeah. the rest. Uh, I had DJs will speak, and I had goosebumps just hearing them speak profoundly about the role that you play, played as far as the media in South Africa. He said, 
you created the generation. You mentored so many people, including him, to become what he is today as a broadcaster. And tell me about that in, in, in a bit, just your experience in SA as far as broadcasting is concerned, being on TV, being on radio, and the influence that you left. The sum total of the man that I am is inspired and affected by the various experiences that I had, not just in Zimbabwe, in South Africa. I was in South Africa at perhaps a, a prime time in my life. Yes. And I also was able to further experience other broadcasting institutions and environments outside of, of Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, Botswana, Zambia, I worked in all those places. I did a lot of consultancy and setting up of stations in those places. I'm currently working on a couple of radio stations in, in, in Southern Africa and one in uh, North Africa as we speak. Wow. We are working on a digital platform, which is really important for Africa because Africa really will be, if everything goes according to plan, Africa will lead digitalization. I'll tell you why. Because all the other... Uh, systems that are prevalent are already uh, rooted, you know, they've been institutionalized. Yes. So we are starting afresh as Africa. And I think with the, with, with the advent of digitalization, Africa will lead. That's important. But talking about my experience in South Africa, I, I got into South Africa um, as a young man with a lot of energy and, and with a lot of go power. And I, I believe that God led me to do certain things that were out of the ordinary. Yes. And in so doing, I think I, I created a certain standard and a level and appreciation of what we do, you understand, but as, as broadcasters. To an extent, they started taking broadcasters and the institution quite seriously because we were able to break certain boundaries. And I thank God for that opportunity. But most importantly, I want to talk and, and I want to speak right here on this platform to therefore mention that the broadcasting institution does not, does not only shape societies, it shapes, it shapes religion, it shapes business, it shapes future generations. True. And I think uh, yourself and people like me need to be taken seriously because we are the mouthpiece. I want to, to give an example of how God has been able to create marvelous things. He's a DJ. He speaks into things. He speaks okay. into situations, into lives. And that's what we do, isn't it? And I think we need to be able to now recognize the power of this, this industry, this, this movement, and, and how important the opportunity that lies before us is in us to make a difference and to really begin to rebuild Africa uh, and, and bring back the lustre of Africa and, and, uh, and change the direction that this continent has taken in the last two to 3,000 years. Wow, that's deep. And when you look back uh, at the broadcasting in Zimbabwe, as far as radio is concerned, um, how do you compare the generation of broadcasters from the 90s, the 80s, and now? Do you feel that their zeal, the drive um, is the same? It's very interesting and it's a very important comparison in that when we were starting out, you couldn't fake the funk, you couldn't fluke the business. With the advent of uh, social media, there is a lot of fake news, fake lives, fake personalities, yes. and and there is lack of authenticity. Now, I'm saying this because I want to help a lot of people out. Yes. Having 150,000 likes does not necessarily mean you have added value, you know, to somebody else's life. Yes. Yeah. 
So I, I want people to therefore recognize that it's not so much the number of likes, but it's, it is the potency of whatever it is that you're doing, whether you are, you are a musician or you're a YouTuber. Ensure that whatever you, you bring out, whatever you showcase has value, you know, mm. and that it will change circumstances in the viewer or the consumer's life. Yes. Kulumani Communications, yeah. you were producing yes. the talk on the beat at some point, and yeah. you came up with the legendary Zorziri, uh, which has become yeah. and remains one of the iconic statements that you, uh, you, are, you, are, you are, uh, recognized for. Let's talk about Kulumani Communications. Does it, does it still exist? And how are you? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, it does. It does. Uh, one of the things I've been trying to do, one of the things I've been working hard at achieving is really, as I mentioned earlier on, is to go into the digital space. It's new real estate. It's a, it's a totally new market. And that real estate, like any real estate, is a finite product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Kulumani Communications did a lot of work during the analog period of broadcasting and now we are repackaging ourselves as Kulumani Digital Communications and we'll be doing a lot of work. We already have uh, quite, quite a number of customers um, and I want to say this and I think this is quite important. Africa has a lot of stories. Africa has a lot of, of, um, of depth yes. but Africa lacks the ability to package to produce, to, um, to create material that can be placed in a digital library, as, as, as an example. Africa has a lot of information on herbs, on, 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 on how people can, can fight against like what we're going through right now, yes. Corona. People then went crazy about Zumbani tea and things like that. We've always known. But that information is not readily available. That's very so the future of Africa is in content farming. What you are exactly doing, others should also do the same. There are a lot of stories that Africa has to tell, not just for Africa, but for the rest of the world. If you were to Google Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Google will give you 550,000 responses just by typing his name. If you were to Google Robert Gabriel Mugabe, you probably have five responses. Why is that? That is, that is a travesty. That's true. Uh, so we, need, we really need to go into the ability to package, to restore, uh, to keep mm -hmm. records, to produce, film, document, so that there is value in who we are and others beyond our time can consume that we know so very well. That's so true. Um, you have emceed so many events, uh, and you still continue to MC and present so many events. Uh, some of the major events that you have seen from what I watched, uh, the Miss Malaika and, and, and so forth. But what would you say has been the highlight of your career as an MC? I think, I think what comes to mind right now is I've really done a lot of things on the African continent and other places. One of the highlights be because of the size of the product was working uh, in France, showcasing the 1998 World Cup. Wow. Uh, prior to that, I'd, I'd done some work for the Olympic Games. Um, you know, I've covered the African Cup of Nations. Uh, I've done quite a number of things. I did work uh, on, on, on the Miss, Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss, Miss Tourism World, and, and events such as that. But I think the biggest of them all was, obviously, um, the 1998 Soccer World Cup. I was in France for almost two months for the period, entire period that uh, 
the tournament was taking place and I learned a lot. I made a lot of uh, contacts and, and connections, which I still am working with today. And, and I'm sure that um, a lot of exciting things are going to happen. Oh, great, great. And let, let, let's talk about um, your free time. What do you yes. occupy yourself with? I, I, I like to learn. I like to learn new things. I like to understand. I've always been a kind of guy who will go to a place and observe. Uh, uh, I, I, I have been taught never to be myopic. Do not do not look and see anything using one dimension. Um, look at things globally. Mm -hmm. You know why the eagle is such an amazing and fantastic bird? Because it has an ability to see beyond what its prey sees. When it goes up in the air, you know, it has a wider spectrum of what is going on below. And I think in, in life, we people need to be able to, to cultivate that kind of, of response to the life and situations. See beyond what the eye is communicating to you. Because eyes and, and the, the, the ability to see a certain advantages, but also it has certain limitations. Yes. And and what and when one begins to to prepare themselves to see beyond what the the eyes allow for him or her to capture, you begin to understand things about life just a little more. Oh, great, great. Are we gonna see you uh, on TV? I know right now the news stations are going to be licensed uh, and radio. So are we going to see you back on TV? Definitely, definitely. In the next two months, without a doubt, I'll be back on the scene. We wanted something just before Corona. As everybody says, 2020 has been <laughs> three years <laughs> in one. <laughs> We're celebrating our third anniversary in 2020 for 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Some things have been interrupted, yeah, but also sure. it gave us a bit, a little bit more time to prep for for what we're just about to do. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, your advice to the younger generation of entertainers as well as broadcasters. What would you say to them? On authenticity. Be the best person that you can be. Be the best plot that God created. Thank you. We are inspired, as I mentioned, we, we as, as broadcasters, we have a very important role to play in today's society. Yes. Uh, most of us, when we got into, into the market, we because we, the only source of entertainment was coming out of the States and the UK, we wanted to be more British or American than we were Africans. But I, without a shadow of a doubt, if Africa begins to embrace it's it's color, it's yeah. Uh, yeah, it's value, very important. If Africa begins to understand its value, and we celebrate that, we'll be able to become a better people and a better continent. Thank you. Um, your son, Matas, yes. is a hip hop artist, and yeah. he's one of the finest. I really enjoy his music. Um, just. Tell me about that. Is that inspiration coming from the father and how much of support do you give him? You, you know, one of the things that I learned about now that I'm a grown man was the fact that the father figure is a very important part of manhood. Sure. Uh, even if you look at it in terms of the Bible. Yes. Uh, Bible says, you know, honor your mother and your father, that kind of thing. The, one of the worst things about today's society is the role and the responsibility of a father is almost non-existent. Yeah. So what therefore happens is when fathers are not there, young people go into all kinds of problems and trouble because they do not have somebody who can speak into their lives and assist them make the right kind of choice. Wisdom is void when fathers 
are not their plot. Um, my son is a very important, his success is a very important part of my legacy. Yes. If he succeeds, I've also succeeded. And, and I, I, pr I pray for those who, for reasons that go beyond themselves, that may not have fathers or, 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 or parents that, you know, in, in store wisdom into their lives, uh, that they can find somebody who has great experiences about things to do with life, to be able to assist them as they grow. Because you see, you are a sum total of the information that you have, uh, you have come across. Yeah. And, 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 and the, the more information that you get, the better you become at making the right decision. So I think it is important. I'm, I'm very proud of, of King Mataz. I'm glad he's the man that he is. And I, I truly believe that, uh, you know, he's got a great future in front of him. Yeah. Wow, well, it's been awesome. It's been great speaking to you. But uh, before we end, on a lighter note, I want to know, uh, like, uh, what's on your playlist? Are you also, is uh, Hello Mari one of the tracks that you <laughs> listen to? <laughs> I want you to represent me because see, everybody is talking about the hello, Mari must give me some kind of uh, of dividend, yes. <laughs> okay? including Jam Master. Don't you think so? <laughs> I think so. I think he owes you because you made the call first and people rebuked you, but now look where we are. Even corporates are just absolutely you. Ooh, everybody is. Ooh, did, I, did, did, did I not go into a furnace of fire? Um, one thing that happened at that time is is when 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 the story about me being a phone and speaking to God was mm -hmm. made, yes. it, the angle was one was singular. What we were discussing at the time is how God is able to communicate, and yes. and the pastor uh, who I was with who had asked me to to um, to demonstrate. You know, sometimes somebody can call you on the phone. And you can be in a loud room. And there can be a lot of voices and, and a lot of sounds around you. But if you concentrate on the one thing that is important to you, in this case, being the person on the other side of the phone that has just rung, you're able to communicate with them, isn't it? So that is what we were trying uh, to explain to the congregation. And, and you know, Journalists being journalists. People uh, yeah, yeah. Teacher, I'm phone, that kind of thing. And, yeah. uh, and sometimes in life, what I've learned to do is sometimes just let things be. People will then sure. begin to understand as time goes by. And here we are. Uh, Hello, Mari has become an international phenomenon. And I started yeah. it. And so sure. next time you, you want God's phone number plot, you know who to call. You know who to call. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been an honor, a, uh, a great honor to just be speaking to you. Uh, like I said, you inspire a generation, and I'm part of that generation. And it's humbling to just have you uh, on ear guided conversing with you. It means a lot. Um, your word to your fans, people that love Tishmatas. I, I appreciate your time, your love, your compassion, most importantly, your support. Uh, I am nothing without you. Also, I want to say that um, we we still have a lot to do. Um, this is only the beginning of greater things and greater opportunities. And even to you, Plot, thank you very much. You're a good man. You're doing great stuff. Continue to rise. Uh, you know, the future is bright for everybody. Africa is the greatest continent. It has the greatest people. It has the greatest resources. It has the greatest weather. You know, we're blessed to be who we are. Wow, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Until next time, uh, stay tuned. Everybody's watching. I'm speaking there to the elder, to the legend, living legend. Uh, teach my times. But before you go, what keeps you going? Like um, some from your generation right now, 
are no longer in the limelight, but you have remained, you have stayed on the uh, on the spotlight for generations for ages. I think what what has always kept me going is wanting to to do new things, wanting to have new experiences, and and wanting to better my last performance. So as I was saying that with the digital era, we've only just begun. There's a lot to be done and I'm excited about, you know, the future and the opportunities thereof. So we'll see you a lot. Zazuri. Maybe you can give us that Zaziri. Like Zaziri. <laughs> Peace, bless. Thank you so much, Elder Teach Matas. It's been awesome. It's been great speaking to you. To everybody who's been watching, my name is Philip Marco and the platform is here ground. New voice amplified. But this is not a new voice. This is a legendary voice that we've been speaking to. So thank you. God bless. God bless.